Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. Today we have a little job on hand. A viewer of the channel, Pascal, potentially for next year's Finnish Brutality, wishes to mount a Picatinny rail on an original Stringer 57 scope mount. Now these are deep drawn sheet metal construction with two machine steel inserts, relatively simple construction, and there are the two pads for the mounting of the 4x24 power optic. Now we have the raw materials on the table, on the workbench today. A raw piece of Picatinny rail blank made out of steel and a solid tool steel blank. Now the idea is, is that using the four screw holes of the original mount to make an adapter plate, tap a couple of holes, and then mount the Picatinny rail right on top. It's pretty straightforward. Probably going to use a variety of machine tools today so you can see what happens around the shop. I drafted a couple of uh, technical drawings for this particular project. Here's the adapter plate. It's going to be relatively straightforward. We're going to shape the tool steel blank down to size, uh, drill and tap these holes. We're going to add the bevels as a last step. And then the Picatinny rail itself. Um, this particular one has a, a little weird feature. It actually came with a kind of a dome surface on the bottom. I don't know why it was delivered that way, but it's the only one I could find locally at a reasonable price. So what we're going to do is that we're going to deck this surface here flat and then we're going to uh, counter, counter bore and uh, drill all of the holes on the rail proper. So let's get right to work, shall we? I think the first step would be to cut these two blanks to length in preparation for machining. to uh, do the side milling and the hole drilling, counterboring, and tapping, we're going to be using a pseudo Emco FB2 milling machine. Uh, in fact, in reality, this thing is a uh, standalone lathe milling head, which I plopped onto an import table to make a standalone mill. I can tell you that this combination weighs about 100 kilograms, but it works extremely well. It's uh, as rigid as it can be for this weight class, uh, you can't expect miracles, but um, overall a great compact package. Um, I have plans to make it um, even more interesting with a potentially DRO, a chip tray on the bottom, so and maybe even an auto feed. So lots, uh, lots planned for this particular baby right here. Now sadly we'll not be using it today, but it deserves an honorable mention. This right here is my Mcomat 8.4 screw cutting lathe. Uh, this particular one um, is in pretty good shape, was made in 1980 and uh, I fitted it with a solid tool post riser and uh, with a special multi-fix AS size, quite interesting. Uh, custom hand wheel here for smoother feed. Overall this lathe is really a joy to use. It's quite nice, very compact, about 70 kilograms which makes it quite manageable in terms of transportation and overall weight. Um, so. Get ready to see this little machine in action in the uh, in coming videos. This right here is my Cal Andola Model 11 23 centimeter stroke tool room shaper. This particular one was made in Austria in the city of Steierglank and uh, was built around 1950. It was lovingly restored, repainted, and is now in full working condition. Now it's a little bit on the obsolescent side. This type of machine is quite good at generating flat uh, surfaces with excellent surface finish using just uh, standard lathe tooling. This particular one is a aluminum carbide insert. It works pretty well in these uh, small shapers with light clappers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tram in the vise to make sure that the reference surfaces are at least parallel to the travel of the ram and then we can already start uh, facing all of the individual components of the adapter plate and the Picatinny rail uh, bottom underside. Let's get right to it. I say parallelism to ram travel looks pretty good. All right, so the job is set up, stroke length adjusted. 
I put the depth of cut down to 0.2 millimeters at a 0.12 step over. I'm just going to clean up this side so I have a nice flat face and then I could flip it over and work on the other side. Let's get to it. Engage auto feed and watch it go. It's a very nice uh, shaped adapter plate. I just need to clean up now the ends and the sides. They're not super critical, it's mostly just for aesthetics. But that will prep us for the drilling and tapping operation for the adapter plate. Alright, so I finished uh, drilling and tapping all the holes. Now it's time for the final touch, which is to put in a nice 45 degree bevel into the part. A nice feature about this shaper is that you can tilt the entire table, so you can still get a quite rigid setup. And uh, with the auto feed, I mean, it really is a breeze uh, to machine these uh, complicated bevels. Now you can see that on the technical drawing, I just for ease of, of interpretation, from the theoretical edge right here up to the surface of the bevel, I had to dial in 1.41, and that is theoretically what I should move the, the tool slide uh, for. So let's get right to it. Now that's what the heck I'm talking about, a proper bevel. So while the shaper is running, I'm going to face off the ends of the Picatinny rail to have them flush with the uh, locking tabs. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Now I'm going to shape the bottom side of the Picatinny rail. Now because there is not a lot of uh, clamping surface here, I'm going to take uh, very conservative cuts to avoid this slipping. So um, the idea is to get the rail to 9.3 to 9.5 millimeters, so we'll aim for that ballpark roughly. That will also help us establish a nice flat surface so that the parts meet together uh, optimally. Let's get to it.
All right, here's the final product. We have the adapter plate with the pretty two little bevels here and the correct holes, as well as the Picatinny rail here that has been completely finished on the underside and with the three counter bores for the adapter like this. So now that the two are together, we can finally cold blue the parts and then uh, ship them off to the customer. Alright, so after a bit of cold bluing and uh, oiling, the parts turned out quite uniform and dark. Didn't quite get the counter bores in there, but that's really not that big of a problem. And you can see on the original scope mount, I would fasten this plate on top, four Allen screws with lock washers on the bottom, and then from the top, we have some special spec cap head screws with thin heads and here is the final complete assembly as you can see it looks quite elegant and quite sharp no modification to the original mount nice and solid and repeatable so that marks the end of this uh, quick little project um, it was a nice fun day a uh, nice and relaxing project I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing this being used in the next match. Thank you very much for watching and um, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.